This video shows two beta engines and will compare the power output from them. The taller engine on the right is a simple beta engine. They're both beta engines, but the one on the right is taller because it has a simple smooth tubular hot cap and displacer. Its bore is 5 inches in diameter. You can see the hot cap at the top. For, uh, further away at the window is a, another beta. This is a lot shorter because the hot cap has internal thinning. This gives a far bigger area to allow the gas to be heated against the hot metal. Its hot cap is only 4 inches in diameter. Perhaps it's going to develop less power. We shall see. We are now looking into the crankcase for the engine. Both engines use this rhombic drive mechanism. We're looking here actually, the engine has been turned upside down. We're looking from the bottom up inside the crankcase. This mechanism makes sure that the displacer and the piston both move vertically in a straight line. And here you can see the arms of the rhombic drive moving the displacer rod. Right, let's light the tall rhombic. There we go. This engine has quite a thin hot cap. This means that the start-up time will be quite short. The thin metal of the hot cap allows the heat to get through to the gas quite quickly. It won't be very long before we can start to turn it over. Right, there it goes. That took about 20 or 30 seconds to get the heat to build up before we could start it. It takes a while for the engine to develop full power. At the moment it's running two devices. On the right there you can see the generator and uh, at the moment it's not uh, under any load um, but we will shortly start connecting some light bulbs to it. The other device that's being run is a mechanical pump there on the left in yellow and red and uh, so there are two loads on the engine and here we uh, with some light bulbs running, two of them, probably about 20 watts and about 9 volts. So the engine's more or less at full power. Now it's time to remove the burner from the tall engine and transfer it over to the 4 inch, the shorter engine. Please look at the diameter of that head hot cap. And when it transfers to the smaller, lower engine, it's a narrower one, a 4 inch diameter as opposed to a 5 inch diameter. And it's time to fix the uh, burner into position. So the test is quite rigorous in the sense that this is the same burner with the same gas supply and the same setting to supply heat to a different engine but with uh, uh, this finned hot cap rather than a smooth one. That's the burner being lit there, and uh, again, it will take time to warm the burner up, and you can see a heat shimmer developing over the top of the burner. All thermal devices take time to get up to operating temperature. Even an electric kettle takes a minute or two to boil the water. With a Stirling engine, it's about getting heat into the metal, which in this case is a bit thicker because it's finned, and then into the working gas. This first starting attempt has just failed because the engine has been taking heat from the hot cap and uh, it needs a bit more. But this second start, away we go. Three or four minutes have now passed and the engine is building up its power. Two devices are being driven. One of them is the self-pressurization pump. On the left you can see its pipe wagging. The other is the water cooling pump, which is driven, there's a small handle on the right rotating. We're about to put in the electric fan, but uh, the RPM, we need to build up the RPM a little bit more to put the extra load on. The strobe pattern will tell us that. We're waiting for the power to develop, which is needs the pressure to develop. We're at 6 PSI now, 5 to about 10 o'clock, and 2 o'clock is 10 psi and as the pressure builds so the power builds so yes the electric fan is now in and the rpm will have dropped so looking at the strobe pattern again the 
the rate shows that uh, the extra load has taken the RPM on the engine down. But the pressure is still building and that allows the power to build. So we're now nearly at 7.5 psi, 12 o'clock on the dial. And if we look at the voltmeters, we're doing about 9 volts. So this engine is producing about 30 watts, which is much the same, perhaps a little bit better, than the bigger 5-inch engine. Here's the gas pressurisation pump. With more molecules in the engine, there's more energy to drive the engine. So, there it is. Pressurised to 10 psi, making 8 volts, and driving an air pump, a cooling fan, a water pump, and a 75 watt bulb. All from a smaller diameter engine, 4 inches rather than 5 inches, and a lot shorter. The interior fins make all this possible. They support a far greater heat transfer and can heat the greater pressurised volume of air. Subsequent prony brake testing has given some measurements on the two engines. The 5 inch engine produces about 30 watts. By comparison, the 4 inch engine it can produce up to 150 watts. This is because of the increased surface area inside the engine with the internal finning. This can support a far greater heat transfer and thus support the higher volume of gas molecules at the 10 psi pressure.